All right, welcome. We've got another video for you. I'm going to do this one a little bit different. Um, so all these memoirs of the Ghost Hunter playlist that I have on my channel, uh, they're composed of old tapes that were shot like 20 years ago. So I thought it would be different to actually have me watching it and reacting to it this time. Obviously, I know what the tapes are sort of about by their title, but some of these I haven't watched in like 20 years or something. So I thought it'd be kind of neat, you know, kind of like talk about it. Um, the other thing is, since the footage is old, so it's kind of the technology we were using, um, it might be more intriguing to talk about it as it's happening, because obviously there's going to be some very amateurish um, filming going on. So uh, this one here is our first gig with Donovan. So this happens back in 2002. Uh, Donovan was a DJ that was working in Tucson. I think it was 93.7 KRQ or something like that. And uh, he had this thing called Ghost Patrol. And what happened was he tried to get some local ghost hunter guys. And they were like, yeah, it's $200 base free plus, you know, $100 for every ghost we find. And, you know, he, he's not a fool. So he told him to get lost. Went on the internet, found us all the way up in Albuquerque. And uh, said, hey, would you guys come down, you know, and, and do some ghost hunting stuff that we're going to put on the radio? And we, Bob and I said, yeah, hey. Rock on, let's go do this. They're paying the hotel room. Um, when we got down there, we were trying to fill up the car. They wouldn't even let us buy our own gas. They'd, oh, company credit cards, you know. And I just remember, we were like, yeah, that is what we're talking about right here. This is the way it goes on should be for us. But anyway, uh, we had two locations that we went to on this first time. The very first is the Sosa House. And this is uh, basically the oldest house in Tucson. Uh, it sits downtown. Uh, built in around 1870 or so. Um, it's been preserved as a, a national historic landmark and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, as far as I know, we're the only people that have really gone in and investigated it. All these years later, I went and checked, and I, I couldn't find anybody else that had done anything. So uh, let's let's see what the, the video is here and uh, see what happens. Nice and quiet right now. Okay, something I got to mention right off the bat, real quick. Um, this camcorder he's using, this is really old. Nowadays, on these night vision cameras, they have a little screen that, flop, that flops out, and you can film like this and see. This was before that time. This you had to look through the viewfinder, so you see people doing this. They're, and that's what's happening a lot in this. Probably one of the reasons why we never put it out there is because the. You're going to get dizzy if you watch it too much. So uh, just letting you know, that's kind of what, what's happening here. So he's a lot of times he might be using this to actually see where he's going. Um, so... And exactly what he's doing. Seeing where the hell... Don't want to trip over the chair. I can hear Donovan interviewing people, so hopefully it goes over that way. Okay, he is using it to see his way around. Um, something important is happening right here, and it's, it's dawning in my memory now. The girl in the frame here, the blonde-headed girl, was freaked out. Uh, she thinks there's a ghost all around her and stuff. And I'm, I moved over, and I'm telling Bob she's freaked out. Keep an eye on her. Now, to Bob, this is, okay, the ghosts are going to be around her. I'm going to keep the camera on her. So, um, yeah, that's... The, what the whispering is, she's trying to figure it out. I'm just basically. She's from 
familiar with the building and then she's all freaked out like oh, yeah. it's all in there. You know, I do have something a little different. You can do something called electronic voice and all that. So ask questions. And what we'll do is we'll video case and we'll analyze that. Basically what we'll do is we'll take a whole sound with the shoe we lost. <laughs> Let's ask the freaked out girl to ask all the questions. <laughs> this is weird because um, this ghost patrol thing that he did, I think he, he eventually went down Sierra Vista, Arizona. And, you know, Donovan's ghost patrol became a big deal. In fact, I think we did the last one in 2019, I think. So, you know, this is, you know, he was, he became really, really good at doing EVP is what I'm saying. And so it's weird to see us introducing this concept to him, you know, like, oh, yeah, this EVP thing, you know, and for him to be so good at it, it feels weird now. But uh, that's what's about to happen here. Ask the freaked out girl to do EVP. Okay, well, we're going to have Shannon ask the questions. So Shannon, get dead quiet. So everybody needs to just be quiet. We're going to try to get some people actually talking back to us, and we're going to run this back later on, and maybe we'll get some audio out of it. So Shannon, I want you to ask some questions which would be, I want to know who's in the house right now and what's your name. Basic questions, correct? That's right. right. And you have to speak up for us. Everybody has to be quiet for this. Everybody needs to speak up. Everybody needs to stand still. All right. Is there anyone in this house right now? Okay. Uh, two things. This is what's making me laugh. <laughs> All right. So Bob's watching the girl, but you know, I know Bob is a fan of the female posterior, and I'm sure it's, he's just looking for ghosts. <laughs> the camera's kind of like. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to check out a girl's, you know, behind, might as well do it with an IR camera in the dark where you're not going to get caught. <laughs> but the other thing was. Uh, Donovan going, does this need to be louder? And I'm like, oh, no, they here just fine. <laughs> just keep going. So uh, that was kind of funny. Anyways, let's get back to this. Died here. A little bit quiet. I want everybody to ask you. Who died here? Were you killed? Who died here? Who died here? It's not the helicopter. There's the dead coming to get us. Okay, let's ask one more question. Um, you can ask, what is your name? What is your name? You ever notice that anytime you're, when you're doing EVP, that's when, the, you know, the helicopter's going to come over or a car's going to go, you know, loud motorcycle or something goes down the street. It's called electronic voice phenomenon here, but it's kind of different. EVP for short. And uh, it, it, it's kind of interesting. Ghost hunters cannot prove his voices of the dead. However, skeptics can't disprove it either. Sorry, you receive any Tonight? No, no, I mean, in the past, we have hundreds of samples on our website at sgha.net. People can download those. No, that just freaked me out. I appreciate that. Okay, I got to, I thought I, real quick. Um, what the people he's filming are some of the employees and stuff that work there. Um, what they think, they think there's two female ghosts and one male ghost. Um, stuff that happens. In the breezeway in, that you come into, when you open the front door, there's mirrors and big, big, tall things, and they see people in those. Uh, there's also a bell that activates when you go in the door. It rings to let the people know that someone walked in. Uh, they'll hear that ring, go check it out, and there's nobody there. So it's, it's stuff like this is going on, um, and that's why I guess Donovan found out and, and hooked this place up for us. But I um, thought I'd mention that. Like, why are we here? That yeah, kind of jumped into the video and didn't mention it. <laughs> Damn, I'm young back then. Look at that. Oh, crap. Oh, you're on it? I'm on her. He's still filming her. Okay, I just came by and asked him, are you on it? Saying, are you watching her, right? You're keeping an eye on her. Apparently quite quite a bit. He's he's on it. Like just like he said. 
<laughs> not playing Ken, whatever you're doing. No, it's weird. Come here, Shane. No. Look at, look at the eyes. No, come here. Go yeah. in there. I know what it looks Go like. Through that. No, no. Look at my eyes. I know what they look like. I watch Survivor. They have those cameras at night and they show it on I'm screen. Busted. All right. All right. It's cool. All right, we're going to go back outside. Hop back. Did you get anything outside? Uh, we didn't. We haven't really checked outside yet. Ah, thank you. I'm on IR. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the building is dark. That's the weird thing, I didn't really go outside. I was staying inside. Okay, um, Possible hit back inside the door. Something to say about this thing real quick. Um, back then, when we're talking like, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, um, orbs were a big thing. Um, to put the disclaimer on this, when we were doing this stuff in the 90s, when you had just film cameras, you didn't get orbs. It, it, the optics and the way it's designed, they just seldom happened. As the digital technology came in, people were taking photos. They knew that you could take a remote and see the light out of the end of the remote so it could sense infrared part of the spectrum. And uh, these orb things start popping up and that became a huge part of the hobby. Um, by 2005, you know, we pretty much now yeah, these orb things, they're just dust particles, bugs, whatever. I will do another video probably about that. I'm sure I've rambled about it on the channel somewhere, but um, in these early tapes, you are going to hear it. What I think he just saw, and he's talking about that light that moved across. There's a window back there, and I think he's seeing car lights. Um, um, I want to go through and watch this a couple more times, and if I think something different, I'll add it. But seeing where I was back that way, and I remember there being a, a car. So um, I don't think that's an orb. But keep in mind, he's looking through a little viewfinder on a little EBD screen. And so that's going to look really crazy when you're doing that. I don't know how many of these things that, oh, we'll look at it later. Oh, my God. And you put it on the TV. It's a bug. Damn. Didn't think it was paranormal. All right, streaking across these guys. Just got a possible hit streaking across you guys. What, a head? Hit, hit. Oh, I thought you said hit. a head. Right through here. Don't be yeah. saying no head, all right? Right, right past you guys. <laughs> no head around here, okay? Well, I didn't know there was going to be going on next door. What do we got going on next door? Toy Story. Uh, yeah, Toy Story 2. Oh, that's, that's what we did. Yeah. I think they hang out around. Hmm? What? I think they hang out around inside that house. Um, yeah. Okay, hang on. What are you telling her? Most of the hits we've got have already been around here. I said that I think they hang out around. Okay, so Donovan's coming up with the mic. What are you telling her? You know, because he wants to obviously be in on it. Um, Bob's filming the ground. This happens a lot with Bob because when Bob gets talking, um, he, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. And the camera starts going down like this and he'll talk. And then like 10 minutes later, oh crap, I'm filming. You know, so that's what's happening here. But, you know, normally, uh, let's see what the conversation is. And uh, Normally when he gets like that, it's he's having some kind of in-depth conversation. So. What does it look like? the train. Uh, on infrared camera, it just looks like a little ball of light. It's just dripping so apparently, light. Shannon Black is our bug light. <laughs> she has been attracting all the uh, electronic, uh, um, like the orbs and everything. I've been yeah. attracted to Shannon. Now, is there a reason why <laughs> sometimes people actually attract this stuff? Yeah, I'm hey, yeah, drunk you, or something. You got to consider that if if they're red and these are the spirits of the dead, a lot of the times they will feel protective of people. They'll actually hang around and try to make sure that nothing bad happens to them. I'm really afraid. Feel my arms. My arms are freezing, and it's hot in there. You're not scared. She, you're not... 
She's scared to death, seriously. No pun intended. So, uh, <laughs> Bob and I do not agree on a lot of our um, personal ideas about this stuff. So we're, we're going to hear a lot of what Bob's thoughts were at that time. But I think some of that is he's aware that she's scared. Well, I told him earlier. And he's just trying to calm her down a little bit. But um, knowing Bob, he'll he'll kick into, you know, protective man. You know, I'm going to protect the female. Yeah, um, we'll see. <laughs> we got to get her out of here, dude. I bet you that's what's going to happen. Uh, oh. <laughs> that's <what's> <laughs> I'm getting nothing out here. How far off will they venture? Like, you know, just around the house. They follow you home sometimes. Serious? Yeah, they won't stay. Usually, if they follow you home, they're just curious. They're like, wow, oh, really? Kind of like a mom and dad. Go for your house and go. That's nice. So that's something that Bob and I kind of disagree about. Um, you know, he thinks they can follow you home. I've, I've never subscribed to that. But I think what's interesting is that despite having these different viewpoints on things and disagreeing on a lot of things, uh, we're still able to be friends. And that actually kind of made that dynamic a lot more interesting and, and uh, helped uh, with a lot of these uh, little ghost hunt investigations things that we were doing. So um, anyway, so going back to the video. Really? Yeah. Have you ever been Yeah. 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 Long stuff I don't say was like two days. How'd you know it was up for two days? You just kept on. Well... Older guys are giving me my own house generally comes to let me know. <laughs> you know, it's almost like he was saying, I'm here. What are you gonna do that? No, no, not even no. that. It was just like acknowledge me, I'm here. Oh really? I'm still here, you know. He's using his hands. Say, okay, He's listen, holding right, the camera and he's here. I'm still here. Quit making a mess. He went away. He's moving the camera. He just wanted me to acknowledge <laughs> that he was there. Funny. How long have you been doing it? Oh wow. Uh, actually various members of the group have been doing it off and on for quite a while. Cody's been doing it close to twenty years now. Wow. Yeah, he's, 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 he's the old man of the, of the group for ghost hunting. He's been doing it since he was about 18. <laughs> yeah, you all talk. I'm an old man. Uh, actually, we're I'm old man now. I'm still in my 30s back then. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, we go all over. <laughs> you don't charge people? No. No. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right now we have a team up in Wyoming. Checking some stuff So you out. just hear stories. Yeah, yeah, well, people email us. Yeah, they actually will send us stuff. I'm going to turn this all right, what, what is this room exactly? What is this room exactly? I don't know. Is it a storage room? All right. Chit, chit, do, you see, do you see anything like electrical lines around there? I'm looking, but I'm not seeing. I don't see anything either. Maybe just a thing here. That's a little bit much for this trip. Small it's a tiny room because that's the IR reflecting off the wall. Yeah, I'm getting it reading. It's like yeah. a closet. Um, you're right, you are. So am I. Um, looks like we got some wooden sticks here. Yes. And like a log. Um, discovery. Okay. Could be something in the wall itself. Yeah. Okay, hot spot. I just got a hot spot. Or right around me. Um, he mentioned earlier about having teams out. Um, at this part, we used to be really super busy back in, in those days because there wasn't all these ghost hunting groups. So there are only a few. I mean, let's, we're obviously, we're in Albuquerque and we're down in Tucson doing this. Uh, there's, there's no other teams out there. Um, but that is, in a way, kind of what made it fun back then. It, it wasn't a common thing. Now... Everybody and their grandma has a paranormal investigation team, you know, so it's it's not the same. Anymore. It okay. does stem it well. Don't, 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 don't aim it at me, you'll get me. <laughs> no, I'm trying to shoot Brian. Okay, that's what's going on now, but it, that was definitely a hotspot. Those are fairly rare. I don't usually get hotspots. Alright. But it was in here when I was getting it too. Yeah. We'll have to get some still photos in here. We'll it's interesting you bring up the hotspots. Um, Hot spots seem to always make more sense than cold spots, you know, and there's a lot of uh, ideas, you know, that Bob had, to, you know, it's it's going to give off energy. Nothing converts energy at, you know, 
a really efficient rate, there's going to be energy bleed off and it should be hot. For example, if I'm using my phone, um, you'll feel my phone get warm as I'm using the energy. It, don't, it doesn't get cold where it's going to get frostbite on my hand, you know. So um, that was a big theory. I remember always paying more attention to warm and hot spots than we were cold spots back in. Get some still photos in here. Hey, Jared. Yes, sir. Snap a couple of pictures in there, would you please? Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got a hot spot and uh, we were getting some, some low level readings. Whoa! A big, big bug. Does anybody have a laser pointer out here? Um, again, the, there's the orb thing, but remember when you're looking through the little screen, that looks like, holy crap, what was that? And then when you look at it on the TV, that is obviously a bug. What's going on? No, guess not. What's going on? I just got a big, big, big bright one just went shooting right through. Big, big bright. Big bright orb. We're at the patio. Yeah. There's a little point of light that went What's going on? right down to the ground. That's why I was asking if anybody had a laser pointer or something because it looked kind of like a laser light. How's it by that? That's got a little spike. Did you? You came out here, and now we're getting stuff out here. Huh? Don't scare her. <laughs> no, usually when they follow you around like that, it's because they're interested in you, like, but not for. Bad That's purposes. what I said. So they're like protecting her because yeah. she's nervous. Yeah. Right. There's nothing, nothing at all to be worried about. She was dead serious. She looked right at me and said, "They follow me in that house." They do. That's really weird. Yeah. But she said, "That scared me," and this stuff doesn't scare me. It's not scary. It's weird that she knew that. How did she know that? Everybody can. Okay. You know, you can tell when someone's walking. Like watching you, yeah. Yeah. Or you can tell when someone's walked up behind. Same kind of thing. Really? Yeah. That's creepy. What I think, what I think it is, is that we're all, we all have the innate ability. Some, some people to different degrees of, of, of sensitivity, but we can all sense the electrical field of, of other things. Like people walking a body, we all have our own electrical fields. That's what powers the human body. That's what we're dealing with here: is electrical fields. You know, that's all they are. That just scared me when she said that. She was so serious. They followed me the house. Well, she might be able to tell. She might be able to feel the different. I'm really scared about what Shannon said earlier. What? Shannon is plain as day, just looked at me and said they follow me in that house. Like they protect her, watch over her, and that scares me. Isn't that creepy that she knew that? So one of the things about these press gigs, you'll see there's like a ton of people. Um, it's a dog and pony show for us. Um, there's not going to be serious investigation happening, not with that many people. Um, for us, the advantage was we'd make a connection with the people that can get us access and then set it up where we can do our own thing the way we need to do it later. But, um, yeah, you get this many people. It's almost impossible. But, um, as you can see, you know, these are just people that are, they're not ghost hunters. They're members of the public, some connection to the radio station. I think they had a contest or something to determine who came or something like that. But, um, yeah, you have no control. I don't know. I She's she very me. cold, though. Her arms are freezing. I know. Yeah. She kept, see, she's bad. It's weird. They fall over. That's what she said. And then she's and yeah, they might follow us home, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great. Oops, sorry. That's cool. I just... Anything yeah. over there? Well, over here is where I got that, uh, that huge bright one flying through. Really? Yeah. So do you pick up a lot of Like, and what does it look like? Just like... Whenever she's in there, we get space. He's not really investigating anymore. He's, not about he's just kind of... Well, he's talking. Mix, mix. Makes sense. Makes a perfect amount of sense. Because you know, all you're dealing with here is electromagnetic fields. You know, they're generally like balls of, of energy, right? Anywhere from about, about this big around to about like that. You know, I've actually had I've had orbs sit in one place long enough that I could take a detector and actually map out exactly where it was sitting in this ball. Are you serious? Yeah. People were people taking pictures and stuff. Complete with a cold field, you can move your hand through it and everything. You have readings, you're getting all kinds of readings and stuff. Get it on infrared, and they just like, sit there. Like, well, this is cool. And he's talking about some other tests that were done. One of the things with stuff like that, what he was just talking about, it's one of the reasons why it was easier to buy into that a long time ago. Because there, there's no precedent. There's no, you know, like today, if you go on online, you can find a, a, hundreds of web pages telling you that orbs are dust or bugs or whatever, you know. Um, that wasn't, you know, when we're doing this, this is brand new. No one's ever experienced it. 
But there was some things that, you know, that he's talked about why he believes so strongly in, uh, in some of that stuff. And in 2002, we were still very much in that mindset. This is a way for an adrenaline junkie. Ah, oh, it's great. It's fun. <laughs> this is a way for an adrenaline junkie to get his kicks without actually killing himself. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, rather than kill myself, I'll go play with the dead. Yeah, we might want to take her outside. You know, I predicted that. <laughs> yeah, just freaking out about it. I mean, that's, that's, that's generally the danger with haunted locations. That's very, very true. Um, most of the injuries that happen in you know, haunted places, it's people freaking out and trying to run or get away. And of course, I predicted that. He's, you know, we need to get her out. She's freaking out. So, so yeah predict that one. They don't hurt people. People hurt themselves running away. Really? Yeah. We call it the fear factor. Mm. Yeah. That's where she starts people running away. Showing a good, a remarkable amount of fortitude if she's that badly freaked out, but I'm um, sure might want to get her out of the lab for a little while because I don't want her to like forget and maybe hurt herself like running. <laughs> I've seen people do that. Yeah. Yeah, they just like totally flip out and panic and oh, takes ah. control and they're just like, I like her control running away and they're like, dude, just remain calm now. It's all good. <laughs> I started talking to you and not looking at my camera, I might have missed some stuff. Hello. Oh, well. oh, we're going to review the whole tape later. This is amazing. Now stuff we're really not getting when you go back and you look. Well, we got a bug and we got a car light going by. The amount of stuff we're already, that we're already getting. That's crazy. Hey, bro. Ecto? On infrared? All of this I gotta see. That's really rare. Cody? Yeah. Where's the Ecto? All down this hallway. Alright. Uh, I'm recording. I'm recording. I'm just gonna let this play out then I want See if we can get another one like we did at one time. Flash from the camera. Still an Ecto? You gotta see this orb I got outside, dude. That's how you shut Bob up. Oh, top I mean, high, it was. Top high, up top high. Okay. I got negative. Not there now. All right, moved. Moved off. Located location. All right. Shooting. Flash from the camera. Nothing. My camera gave a brief preview of any film thing that I shot, so I could tell if there was something. So it's all on this breezeway here? They're moving around because I'm getting money. I'm not sure. Do you feel like a breeze? Yeah. Are you guys getting anything? Yeah, we are. We're getting all kinds of crazy. So ever since we got out of here? Yeah. Yep. yep. Okay, so there's nobody in here. We, we got ecto. Yeah, ectos are pretty rare. No, I don't know what that means. Hang Ectoplasmic on. mist. It yeah. looks like uh, smoke. It's hang on, kind of okay. of me. <laughs> okay, hang on right. real quick. All right, now we're back inside the breezeway, and we were all out of the house for about uh, 10 minutes because I wanted to see if we can get some readings. Um, apparently we've got some weird kind of reading, and what is it called? It's, uh, it's called an ectoplasmic mist. Um, it looks kind of like smoke on film, mm -hmm. only there's obviously no one smoking here and nothing's on fire. Let me make sure this is running. Okay, it is. So, and uh, that would be proof that there's actually something in the house? Either that or something's wrong with the camera. Either that or Polo's got gas. <laughs> uh, we had Mexican for dinner, what do you want? Anything with the camera guy, because I got the pictures taken after it. Right on. Oh, that proves that the camera's still working. Okay. As a matter of fact, when we're finished, we can fire up that laptop and put these on there and show the Sounds good. Let's do that. Uh, the laptop's plugged in and charging, by the way. It's sitting on that table. Yeah, Cody. You gotta see the, the orb I got. It looks like a laser light flying through the play. I mean, you know, you'll hear me I'll say, to, to say, does anybody have a laser fire? So it looks like it is that bright. It goes poof, and just zip by, but it is really bright. Okay. What time is it already? Oh, no, it's ten. Okay. It's like bang. That girl is like freaking out. She's totally freaked out. Um, can we get the power back on here? We'll throw it on the. The reason I want to put them on the computer, the way it's showing you guys we didn't go home and go on for the way over the shop, you know. Yeah. Okay, so that's it in the video. Okay, so let's talk about this ectoplasmic mist, uh, what was going on with that. 
Um, so obviously everybody's outside because you're seeing Bob's point of view in the video. Um, I'm inside just, you know, chilling out, taking pictures. Uh, we'd set a natural tri-field meter up by the mirror in the breezeway where they see figures, you know, and it's set on some mode. So any change to the electric or magnetic fields around it within five feet would trigger it to sound an alarm. Um, so I'm taking pictures and I'm just standing in one part of the room, you know, you see everything there. And then I hear that tri-field meter go off. I moved around and took a picture. The reason I had to move, I didn't want my flash bouncing off in the mirror. So I uh, took a photograph. Uh, apparently you can see the, the misty looking thing there. Um, that was kind of strange. Well, that noise was heard outside. And so the second picture, when I take it, you can see that whatever the hell it is, it's faded. It's not as dense. And you can see Polo through it coming in to see what the hell the noise was. Um, it takes about three, four seconds for this camera to cycle. So when you take a picture, it's writing it to the disc and then it has to recharge the flash. Um, you know, it charges up. Boom, I take the next shot. Probably blinding poor Polo there <laughs> with that shot. And right after I took it, he stopped. And he goes, I just walked through something, didn't I? Well, I, I just met this guy. Literally, we've known each other less than six hours, you know. And I'm like, well, why, why do you say that? And he goes, look, my arm, man. He had a hair goosebumps. His hair was standing up. He's like, it was cold, really cold right there. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, well, let me show you. And I flipped the camera to play and played, you know, was able to go back and show him the shots that, that you guys just saw here. He runs outside, of course, tells Donovan, and that's where you pick it up on Bob's end coming in. All right, so what is this stuff? Is it really a ghost? Um, there's two possibilities. One is some unknown thing uh, the camera picked up. He walked through it and had a reaction to interacting with it, okay? The second is it's a photographic artifact, and him having that sensation is just coincidental, Okay. Um, I have a tendency, you know, all these years later to think it was something to do with that camera. Um, this particular camera, digital technology was new. It had been modified, meaning the IR cut filter uh, had been removed from front of the CCD so it could look a little bit deeper into IR. And the reason I say this, as the years have gone by, um, we bought better cameras. This camera that was used to take these pictures did not record an EXIF file, or EXIF. And that's basically digital information that's encoded into the image. Tells you what the aperture is, the flash fired. Um, if you get some really cool software you know, that they have out there, you can even tell if someone went in with Photoshop or GIMP or something and did some painting or something, it's going to tell you even that happened. Um, and when you're doing this ghost hunting thing, you really have to have the exit file intact because that's how you're proving it wasn't manipulated in Photoshop. So that was the problem with this camera. It didn't record that kind of information, therefore we couldn't prove it. That's one of the reasons why, you know, when we were there and you hear at the end of the video, it's like, let's turn on the light. I want this on the laptop so we could show them right now what was just taken the picture of. So what kind of artifact could it be? Uh, there's one in particular that I... I'm uncertain, but I, I think it fits the best, but it, there's stuff wrong. So what it is, is when you're taking photographs, you take a photograph of something bright, like a flash going off in a mirror. It saturates the pixels inside the CCD. So your next photograph, if you take it fairly soon, is going to have a residual on it. Okay? The problem is, even with those types of images, and by the way, they're called it's called ghosting, okay? Um, it's one picture. Well, we have three that have an artifact. It should have cycled. It should have um, grounded itself out. It should not have lasted through that many pictures. So that's the weird part. Um, so in the end, you're left with, well, there are three weird images. And uh, we started looking at this a little bit more. As the years went on, we were like, well, what's the best it could be? We have three strange pictures. Uh, they're not proven that anything exists. They're not proving any kind of phenomenon. It's not providing any information that's going to help determine something one way or another. So um, we never really revisited going back with the old cameras because, you know, we started going, well, maybe, you know, at that time, 
at this time in the video, you could see where the appeal is. Um, ghost hunting, it was neat, you know, and people were always geeked to see you. And then you're taking pictures. The orb thing is, this is new. And a lot of people think this stuff is real at that time. And then you're getting images like this. You can see where it gets very exciting and engaging and all that kind of stuff. But um, anyway, this was just uh, the first media gig. The second media gig we went to right after this was amazing, but that is going to be another video because it's, it's going to be another long one. But uh, you got any questions or anything like that, put them down in the comments and I'll answer them with the best of my ability. And I uh, will see you guys in the next video. Um, also, check out the, the Memoirs of the Ghost Hunter playlist. It's there and uh, we got cool stuff. Check it out.